Greetings. In this section, as promised, I'm going to go over routers. In Framework 1, I would usually leave routers as advanced topic and, to be honest, I would hardly use them in my regular projects. But in 2 version, routers are most essential to understand and you will be using them constantly. Routers are defined in the module's configuration files. So every module can have its own set of routers defined for them. Before going into routers, first need to point out the way the configurations are managed in general across the application. Note how all the configuration files have a return array construct. One for this uh, module, one for the overall application, and one for the autoloaders. The configuration can be in the format of PHP array, INI or JSON. The default is an array because being a native PHP construct you have the best performance since no person would be involved. Note how because this is a complete PHP code you can have a standalone separate application that generates these configurations arrays for you. Maybe you have some fancy database with complex application settings. You can query the database and generate those settings right here and pass them along to the application. Much more flexible than in, than in Zen Framework 1 days. The array key in question that we are configuring is the router key. The router key is an associative array of routes, which is in turn another associative key of all the routes that are defined for the module. And once again, you don't have to define all the routes inside of the module configuration file. If you want some routes to be defined across the entire application, you can put them into this array here. Doesn't matter. Uh, just remember that before the application runs, all the array configurations are merged into one single array. Alrighty, so let's see what the skeleton application has given us by default. The first router I see here is the router called home. So the first key in the router's associative array defines the name of the router. Of course, you cannot have more than one router with the same name. Here we have the type of Zend MVC router HTTP literal. Once again, note that this is PHP 5.3's namespace syntax for defining the name of the class. I'm going to go into types in a little bit. Uh, just going over it, follow the type, we have the, another associative array key for options where that defines what the route looks like from the browser's perspective and what to do when that route has been activated. To find out what each router type does, you can head over to the Zend Framework Manual, framework.zend.com, learn reference guide for Zend Framework 2. I'm curious about routers, not the console one, but the MVC routers, routing and router types. The one in question is the HTTP literal. Here it says, literal routers for doing exactly matching of the URL. So, it is a direct one-to-one -one correlation between the URL name, whatever I type inside of the browser, and the route path. So right now I have the root of the domain, like that pretty much and that being matched with this route, the root, and it tells me that whenever it hits that exactly, it needs to activate the tutorial controller, index controller, and the index action underneath it. There we go, tutorial, controller, index controller, index action. Now, uh, it's not quite index controller, so how is that possible? Well, that's because our controllers are in defined down here underneath the controllers. Remember that all the controllers have to be explicitly defined. You can't just create a controller and the Zen framework will automatically find it. 
you have to specify them directly here. So it creates an alias of sorts that translates tutorial controller index into tutorial controller index controller. This looks like a bit of a roundabout way of doing it, but trust me, it's really, really helpful when you have a large application with multiple uh, ways of getting to places. So to bring the point home, if I try to access some kind of random place like tutorial frame work 2, it's going to tell me that the page cannot be found. But if I define that literal path explicitly in my controller path, it's going to now match this towards the index controller and the application works again. Of course, instead, the actual parent stops working. So you can have both by duplicating this home definition of saying uh, home custom and home default, whatever. Just be careful of creating over bloated router array. I'm going to put the definition back to the original root with nothing after it. Of course, we cannot predict every possible way the client can access our application, so for that we have more dynamic router types. The one that the skeleton application offers us is the segment type. I will quickly note that this route, the default route, the segment one, is a child of a, another literal route type application. I should probably rename this into tutorial so it makes a little bit more sense. So the only way to get into the segment here is by first hitting the tutorial route up here. Let's see what happens if I hit the tutorial one by default. Okay, I'm still in the clear because the tutorial literal route is being routed towards the tutorial controller index controller index action. And now I have an opportunity to define what each segment in my URL path represents. So every time it sees the word tutorial followed by some name here, maybe if I'm defining some kind of blogging application, blog, and maybe post, it's going to translate blog into controller and post into action. If I do that right now, however, it's going to fail because I have no such controller defined. But if I actually create the file and I will just for sake of speed, copy the original one into blog controller and I will change blog and post still doesn't work because remember I have to define it I have to tell it what the blog actually means so whenever it sees blog in its router definition it knows that it needs to translate that into an actual controller called blog controller. The fun part here is I don't even have to name the controller the same way as I am naming the URL path. I can map the blog to completely arbitrary named controller in the file system. It's really fun. So now I shouldn't have any problem accessing the controller, but I do have a problem accessing a view for it. I'm able to render the template and I'm showing these error messages as I'm going along for a reason. That way you are getting used to what the error messages actually mean and where to go to fix them up. So in this case, it's complaining. I have no such template defined for that controller. It's a separate issue, but might as well take care of it right now. Over in a tutorial, creating a directory for blog and creating a
what was it, post.phtml. And here I can say action in blog controller routed by tutorial there we have it of course the segments are not limited to just the controller and action names we can define any arbitrary variables there to demonstrate how to pick up variables from the segment router type I will create something that will translate blog into post with a d5. Let's see where that takes us. I have multiple ways to go around this. I can either make this a dynamic router match where the first two segments will be matched to the appropriate control and action as in this sub route. But that's a bit risky because then I always have to ensure that the first two segments, no matter what, will always terminate into a valid control and action. I don't want to limit my application logic to this extent, so instead I will hard code this particular sequence, blog, post, and an integer, to follow a hard coded literal blog post followed by uh, arbitrary post ID. I will begin my own router definition right after the last router. These router definitions are quite lengthy, so it's a bit hard to see where I should begin. It should be right as the third key in the routes multidimensional array there. And I'm going to call this router blog post. It's going to be an associative array that contains the type that it is, which is a segment type. with options having one well, the first key as the array for route and it doesn't actually have to be all variable segments it can be a combination of literals and variables in this case this segment route is going to be activated as soon as it sees blog slash post slash and then after that it's going to have an optional post ID variable that I will pick up in the MVC controller. If I leave this alone, however, it's not going to be quite enough because it doesn't know what controller to hit. So it's going to give me not found controller error. So I need to give it some defaults so it knows what to do when it sees that. Get another associative array, which has the controller that I can define in several ways. I can either use this style where I give it a namespace and then a subsequent name as the child of that namespace or I can give it the full name straight away to keep things simple I will give it a full name I'm not planning to change namespaces within the namespace if I really want to do that I'll probably create a whole new module see here I will define the default controller for this route is tutorial controller blog and an action for it is the post action that I already have there. So at least that should get me there without too many errors. It looks like I messed up somewhere. I just missed an S in the defaults. There we go. Right back at the action that we were at before. So how are we going to pick up the five at the end there to designate the ID of the blog post we want to view? First up, I'm going to create a failsafe method where in case that ID is not being requested by the client, I will give it a default one of one. And now I will head over to my blog controller to pick it up. 
I'll put it inside of the local post ID variable. And the picking up of the URL variable is simple but very long and winded way of doing it. In later tutorials, I will show how the event manager and service managers work. But for now, the general idea is that the controllers, the MPC and all of that are controlled by events. Zen framework is partially event driven framework. So in this particular case, the event that I'm after is the routing event, followed by the router matcher and the parameter. I can either get all the parameters at once or I can specify which parameter I'm looking for. In my case, I'm looking for post ID. Putting a breakpoint there to see whether I've actually picked it up or not. And there we go, post ID is five. Changing it to something else. Seven. And if I don't include one at all, I get the default one of one. The literal and the segment routers are the most used ones I find. My other personal favorite is the regex router that allows the URL matching based on the string pattern and the variables can be defined with a question mark. Another new router is the HTTP method one that decides which controller to go to based on the HTTP request type, post, put, or get. That is really useful because now you don't have to go through the long list of conditional statements in your controller to figure out how the user got to you through Ajax method, through direct HTTP, or through post.